So I'm going to be showing you guys in this video how to make what I call opalu flies. They are a very small um, little fly for catching bait. Opalu go by the name Speedo in like Florida, but they are the key bait to having a successful day of kayak fishing in Hawaii. Oftentimes a lot of the plagics and big, uh, big game fish, we don't go fast enough on our kayaks to get and warrant a strike on an artificial lure. So by trolling like a slow trolled bait, that's the best way to catch fish. And uh, they are finicky in Hawaii. So a lot of times it took a while, but everyone I know either uses the companion lure uh, bloodworms or the um, big island bait grubs. But those oftentimes don't survive a single drop where if an opailu eats it, it uh, rips off and you have to replace it. It's a pain on the water. You want to be able to drop whenever there's bait around. Um, sometimes they're very, very sporadic. So my buddy and I, we developed a rig that... Um, we can tie these little tiny clear flies out of plastic bags um, and a little bit of flashy boo, and uh, they're very hardy. We can put them on better quality hooks and better quality line. So the rigs last a lot longer, and um, you don't have to re-put on a bait each time you drop. It's it's one of those things that it will just hold on as long as uh, it's you don't drop it to the bottom and snag it on some rocks. So some of the stuff you'll need, um, you'll need some fluorocarbon line. I either use 10 pound or 12 pound. You're going to need a swivel for the top of the sabiki rig. You're going to need some flashy boo. I like this pink and blue stuff where um, it flashes just enough, but it's low profile. Again, you're trying to use a bait that doesn't stand out. Other store-bought sabikis, the white feather ones, have never been successful for me. Um, they stand out too much. You also need some hooks. I usually use size 8s or size 10s. Size 10s can be an issue where the bigger opalu will swallow it and uh, you will have a gut hook bait and won't survive. Um, another thing, I either use white or black thread. It doesn't really matter and you need a good bobbin. Then I use clear nail polish. Um, you can use head cement. It's the same, th same thing really. And then the Ziploc bag, which is the body of the lure. Um, the Ziploc bag we cut into little strands. You only need a medium-sized small piece for the tail section. And then for the body, you want a long slender piece of Ziploc. The first step of tying this fly is to add a loop around the top of the shank of the hook and then add a base layer of thread along the entire shank of the hook. The second step is to take that medium sized piece of Ziploc bag and around six or seven threads of the flashy boo and then make a small like taco out of it and then making a few wraps around that and your line. This should create a little V tail on the entire body of the fly. I tend to trim off the excess material whenever opportune moments arise or as the fly is going in form. You can do it essentially at the end, but keeping up with it is helpful to keeping the fly clean. The next step is to take that long piece of Ziploc bag and to wrap that the same way with a few wraps and attach it to the shank of the hook. That long piece of Ziploc is then wound down the shank of the hook, tightening around that taco I described earlier with the Ziploc and the flashy boo, and then back up the shank of the hook, making a solid core to the lure, and then back to the thread where a few over and under loops secures that plastic on there firmly. At this point, that plastic that was used to make the core can then be cut and then finished up with a few more loops to make a black head to the fly. When 
securing the thread to the top of the head uh, and finishing the tying of the fly, I used three overhand knots. This is usually sufficient, especially when head cement is also used. Final two steps to the fly making is uh, to trim the tail to an adequate length. It doesn't have to be very long and it depends on personal preference and then to finalize the body with a nice layer of clear coat. This could be nail polish or head cement, either one works and then leave it to dry. Okay, now that you saw me tie a fly, um, I'm gonna show you how I tie my Sibiki rigs. Um, I'll be using 12 pound for this. I showed you as a 10 pound, it's either one, depends on what you want. I want a little hardier profile and with fluorocarbon already, it has the same light refraction in water um, as water, so it's practically invisible. I'm gonna go with the 12 pound. But I like to tie um, T-knots in order to have my dropper loop. So I'm gonna look at it, I'm gonna get about a foot and a half of um, trailer line. It's gonna go down to either, or go to the swivel or go down to the weight, either one, depending on which side of the Sibiki rig or the Damashi rig you want facing upward. But then I'm gonna tie a loop. So the T-knot, really hard to explain. You guys can look up a better video on how to do it. Um, but I will tie one T-knot and roughly every foot, I'll put a knot. Uh, T-knot is essentially just a loop with five intervals of it so two three four five and you want to wet it down before you cinch it so the trick about the t-knot is it actually sticks out straight out from your rig it prevents the baits from tangling and you can see there are two threads here. You're gonna trim one of them and make just a long tag end. So I'm gonna do that one more time and then I'll skip to the end where I have six. I always put six uh, flies on my rig. Um, you can theoretically add more to your custom Damashi rig, but uh, it's, I like six, I think it handles better, but it's up to you guys. Depends if you want to rig it while you're out there, that sort of thing. And the one thing I want to tell you guys is this doesn't have to be a perfect rig. Um, a lot of people will go really slow and like make it an art form to tie flies. You'll see a lot of trout fishermen do that. But for this, you need expendability. Um, sometimes the uglier the fly, the better. But I would just say go faster um, with your rigs uh, because who knows, you might drop it a little too low snag it on some of the reef or end up getting what I call ta'apid, where you drop it down into what you think is a bait pile. It turns out it's just a huge school of ta'apid. They rip apart your bait, uh, serrate up your line, and uh, essentially ruin your rig, which is tragic. Okay, now that I have my sibiki tied, um, each of these six knots are T-knots, where they stick out from the side. It keeps the bait propped at an angle if you can see it sticks out which is really nice I'm gonna go through and trim one of the ends of each of the loop knots so that I have a single strand coming out so each of my strands are cut and I have little tag ends sticking out on each so now my rig is actually starting to look like a damashi so I have six of the opalu flies uh, one of the issues that I sometimes come across is that um, the eyes are kind of coated with um, the nail polish, which all you need is another hook to poke it through to ensure that the eyes are open and free enough you can tie a line through it. So I'm going to choose one of the ends um, that is not one of the Damashi parts, uh, and I'm going to tie a swivel to it. I'm using VMC swivels. I like nice, small, low-profile swivels in case I reel it up towards the eye um, of the raw tip. So now I'm going to go down through each of my Sibiki rigs and tie a fly on there. When you're tying your knots, I like to measure about where I want it to stand out to. I would say make sure that you make all of these about the same so that they don't get tangled when they're falling through the water column. 
and uh, once I check and make sure they all look good, this little rig is ready to go. I tend to leave the bottom section where I'm going to tie the weight to uh, free. I can either tie another slip knot straight to um, the weight on the bottom, or you can tie like a little loop knot and then put the weight on that way. Uh, either way, it's personal preference. Uh, if people are interested, um, I can make a second part of this video, the actual part on how I use my fish finder or my graph to catch a pay loop. In total, it usually takes me roughly 20 minutes to make a full rig. Um, again, don't make them pretty. Uh, if you try to perfect your flies each time, it's going to take you a lot longer. It won't be worth it. All the equipment, it probably cost me $3 to make this. Um, on the islands, buying the nice enough um, sabiki rigs to catch fish usually cost eight dollars six to eight dollars you can buy them online six dollars um but again these are using higher quality materials than they do a lot of those are monofilament and the flies will come apart these ones are highly durable and it's all built on fluorocarbon the hooks themselves are the high grade um gamakatsu bonefish hooks uh super saltwater resistant so these will last you a lot longer as long as you're not so good um than those store-bought ones that are usually a, a you buy it once, you use it once, and then it's gone. Mm -hmm.